てるそんなわけですよ。Morning, David. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Well, well you? good. You? Good. We have an echo have this an morning. Echo. Do we? I don't need an echo. <laughs> well, well, Carol Irwin is joining us. Yes, she is. Great. What the heck? Hello, Carol. Hello, Bill. Hi, Carol. <laughs> I'm going to have to leave Tennis. Okay. Basically, you turn this off and turn on the one on the other side for John because he has a he has a counseling session at ten thirty. I have to make sure he's all set for.、Him. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Well, we're we're still waiting for a couple more.、Um, Adam won't be with us today. He's、um, he's got a directors meeting he's involved with. So not <laughs> unusual for Adam. <laughs> That's why we record. <laughs> is, is he a director? <laughs> He's a manager of a unit.、Uh -huh. Wow! Come on, guys. Yeah, he's、uh, he is obviously when he's at the hospital, he's very busy.、Mm. Um, Yeah, yeah. Working for a living was was heck, but I don't think it was more hectic than being retired. <laughs> <laughs> Just di differently, differently. Yeah. yeah, there are days when I think you're right, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> but then my, my my life hasn't changed all that much. Yeah, I'm <laughs> retired. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I really appreciate what you do, David. <laughs> oh, good, thank you.、Um, actually, I, I was thinking the other day that I'm I am only teaching twenty five percent of the number of classes I taught at my peak. I had a period of time when I was teaching twenty one classes a week, which is crazy. crazy. That is crazy. You probably wasn't thinking it was crazy at the time. Well, no, I I, I don't think I was. But <laughs>、uh, <laughs> in looking back, I I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I think picking up a fifty-pound bag of birdseed is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There they are. It's my fault. I missed them. Hi, Joanne. Morning, Bill. Morning, and Carol Arwin. How lovely to see you. <laughs> we we're very glad to have Carol joining us.、Um, unfortunately, it's because Shelley has had to retire from Tai Chi class.、Uh, so yeah. yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. yeah Very much so, very、uh, much so. But we're、uh, we're delighted to have Carol join us,、um, and and she's joining just in time to do a class she's already done before. <laughs> well, that doesn't hurt. No, it does. It does. We all know any of this. <laughs> Good, and, and um, Adam. Um, Has a director's meeting this morning, so he's not not going to be with us. Unlikely excuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>、uh, 
<laughs> okay. So, questions or reports, comments? Not well, a lot I, of practice? We <laughs> <laughs> have nothing to say. We did nothing. No, that's not true. <laughs> what? Did you start to speak, uh, Joanne? <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I'm, I mean, still working on the upward dissolving, but feeling that in the downward dissolving, particularly in terms of for the front of my body, I feel more blockages there. Mm -hmm. It's just a, an observation so far. Um, yeah. So I'm just wondering, hmm, am I not feeling them in the upward dissolving or are they really more in the... <laughs> I feel them more in the front. So I, I'm still just kind of exploring that, I guess. Well, and I think part of that is the amount of experience. Uh, you've had a long time to work with downward dissolving. Mm -hmm. And you yes. just yes. started working with upward dissolving. That's right. It, it One would think that it would be easier to feel the blockages in the yang surfaces of the body, but... Um, not necessarily. I know that's what I expected, but yeah. Yeah, um, and I part of that may be um, th that you have a stronger awareness of the flow of the energy, but not of, of blockages, and I'm no. not really sure why that is. Um, but I I think that that's an experience. Um, I didn't particularly have it, but I but I have heard other students mention that they've had that issue also. Yeah. So, but we are looking for the same sort of thing. Uh, uh, Initially, yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The, the tension, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything for you, Bill? Um, I, I, I need to do it more. I did a, a couple of times and, uh, yeah, I, there's a, there's a couple of blockages that I'm expecting, kind of like a recurring dream, and, <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's what I'm feeling, but I don't think I'm doing it well. <laughs> well, as I said, this is new. And it's it's a different um, it is a different experience. We we up to this point we focused everything on moving downward. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously not that that's a uh, overstatement because certainly there's been some upward movement that we've been aware of, but not in terms of uh, um, dissolving blockages. And so it's it's new, and I think it, with practice you'll find that you begin to open up to wh whatever is there, and maybe you won't have as much, won't find as many blockages um, going upward as you did downward. I, Carol, do you have any uh, feedback on that? Yeah, yeah. Um... Someone, somewhat like Joanne, in, in some ways, the upward was more like a, a clean wash. Mm. It, 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 it flowed much, mm -hmm. um, much, much cleanly, much cl you know, clearly. Yeah. So I wasn't focusing on, it's been a while since I did that, but I wasn't focusing on blockages, but, um, but, it, but just, yeah, it was, it was much much smoother. 
Yes, yes. I feel mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And maybe part of that, I would think, is the difference between yin and yang. Yes. So yes. I think if you think about that, that that can have some bearing on that also. So um, any other thoughts at the moment? Anything you want to add, Carol? No. <laughs> OK. <laughs> It's a difference between blockages and just muscle muscle tension and relaxing. Um, I, I don't think I have a differentiation <laughs> there for what I'm looking for. But, uh, well, there's not a big difference, actually, <laughs> because uh, um, muscular tension is caused by a blockage. So... Um, if you've got muscular tension, then there probably is a blockage there. Mm -hmm. it, it works. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that that that, that go your it is feeding itself. So maybe mm -hmm. the tension <laughs> began to create the blockage. And as the, the blockage creates more tension, and it mm -hmm. just is a big circle that goes on and on. And so until you break that circle and dissolve uh, that, um, there it is. So <laughs> um, the, the, they're very related. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. I was thinking, I, I, as I have blockage in my particular anatomy owing to uh, the uh, spinal tumor that I had when I was like 11 years old and mm -hmm. it wasn't it was benign and everything but it affected the nerves going down to my right leg mm -hmm. so I have blocks there that are not related to muscle tension but are related to nerve damage I th mm -hmm. think so um, and and that's something that's very difficult to correct so you can right. encourage the energy flow through. Um, the, there undoubtedly are, are some blockages there that perhaps might improve the energy flow. I, you know, in that your particular case, I don't know whether um, you can, can <laughs> restore all of it or not. You certainly can't restore all of the nerve function. Um, but energy flows regardless. You know, if you think of people who have amputations, who, who still feel their uh, limb mm -hmm. being present, that's energetic. Um, so the flow of the energy, despite other issues, um, can be pretty full if you get the energetic blockages out of the way yeah and you know things like mountain work real well i feel the i i feel an energy flow even though i don't have a you know as, as much of a sensation if you mm -hmm. scratch this hand or something there yeah yeah good Well, so I'm going to take you into an interesting one today. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be combining and integrating the Nagong installments together that we've worked on up to this point. So <clears throat> traditionally, when uh, cultivating a Nagong practice, you work on one element until you have it unambiguously and then you lay on one more element as you practice over time and develop um, more skill so you get one unambiguously number two unambiguously combine them to one together and then get them unambiguously and combine one two and three and so forth as you now flow 
I will do the same thing, focusing on one Negong topic and then combining it with the others. At most, I will combine three of the Negong topics and then back to a new Negong component until it stabilizes and so forth and so on. Now, as you are doing the whole flow, I will constantly be going back to the I'm sorry, I couldn't I read my own uh, notes here. Going back to the theme of separate and combine. Remember, the main purpose at this level of gods is to use Nagong to develop and move chi. If you are practicing in a way that is not producing chi, then simplify your practice until you can relax again and then progress forward with a sense of ease and fullness. <clears throat> this is very important, especially as you're doing more and more movements. This, <clears throat> that, if you begin to find yourself becoming tense, that you simply slow down and put your entire focus on relaxing everything inside you, and then when you feel as though you have reduced to a reasonable sense of relaxation, then continue to keep adding on more Nigong components into what you're doing. Now, another thing that's very important when you are doing gods, gods is not meant to be a mental exercise. Yes, you will use your mind to tell you what to do, but you have a choice between relaxing and letting yourself go into a deeper state of openness or quote unquote, doing a technique right. Forget the technique. Focus on relaxing and opening up. Part of that may just mean that every month that you are practicing, you have to make sure that you are feeling what you're doing and not thinking about it. <laughs> if the, the object was to think about it, then all this could be done sitting down and you could visualize the whole thing. But that doesn't work as well as standing because it doesn't get uh, you into your whole body. So the simple <laughs> our simple motto will be get out of your head and into your body. And if you find yourself getting into your head too much do something to get yourself back into your body. So it's quite natural, really and truly, that when you're practicing by yourself, that if you had, had to remember, now I'm going to do X, and then I'm going to do Y, and then I'm going to do the next one, it's not going to work. Because the whole object of this is that at the end of the of the day you're doing everything simultaneously and the only way that you can get that done simultaneously is to have what you are doing become a feeling and you have to practice that feeling along with the technique long enough that you have that feeling when you're doing it you're not going to look at yourself and visualize it and think if you're doing it correctly because then all your energy has been sucked into your uh, mental body and there is not going to be much left for the rest of you. The bane of today's world, especially in the digital world, 
is that people don't feel anymore. They think. People are happy <laughs> to have digital sex, but not real sex. Well, the difference between those two is very simple. In the real, there is a live human being, and you feel something. So we're trying now to create the process of taking you away from being an artificial intelligence machine to be bring you back to being human. And to be a human, you have to feel. You have to experience. You have to experience what's happening inside of you. And if you're not experiencing what's inside you, but you're thinking about it, thinking about what you should be feeling inside, you're missing the point. Now remember that when you do this at this stage, there are there, <clears throat> there are in the practice even potential movements in God's plane in the clouds. Potential. You begin doing one through six. Now your six movements are two through seven. So, if I can ask you to stand. And I will ask you to do a, a full flow of gods as we do this. Let's start by just taking a moment, let yourself stand, and feel where you are. And really get your mind inside your body. And if you do it fairly rapidly, have your mind go through every place in your body from head to your fingertips to your toes. So what's occurred is that your mind is inside your body. Now to keep your mind inside your body, there are three places that you want to focus on. And you want to keep that awareness there in all at all times as you are doing the set of gods. One is the bubbling well point on your feet. And if you can, if you're capable of it, where your bubbling well points end in the boundary of your etheric body below your feet. Secondly, your lower Dantian. And third, the Bai Hui point on the crown of your head. And if you can, where it ends in your etheric body above your head. So you want to keep these all stable for a bit. And very important to get your breathing to be very easy and smooth and quiet and allow it to slow. Slowing your breath is really important. almost as important as it being smooth. The beginning just with a little bit of ordinary breathing, belly, sides, and kidneys.
And if you feel confident in that, start doing reverse breathing. But if you don't feel confident in it, then continue with ordinary breathing. And then when you're ready, begin to go into God's. Relax your eyes. So instead of having your eyes be focused so much on what you're seeing, have your vision become inner so that your eyes and your awareness enter your body. So even though you're seeing what's outside of you, you are in effect seeing what's happening inside of you and you're feeling it. So as you begin, start focusing on activating the yin and yang meridian surfaces of your legs and your arms. Twisting in when your arms are bending. Twisting towards the yang surfaces when your arms are extending. And remember that when you activate the yin, you leave the yang alone. And when you activate the yang, you leave the yin alone. Now, if you are stabilized in the boundaries of your etheric body above your head and below your feet, start opening up that field to where you can start feeling how your hands are intersecting your etheric body in front of you. And to the sides of you and in back of you. And whenever inside your etheric body you feel a blockage, ice to water, water to gas, You could continue doing this, but the point at the moment is that you want to have your awareness in your etheric body. So hopefully you are always using it. Now let your body lengthen. A special attention to the sense of lengthening the legs. As the arms will be relatively easy and the legs much more difficult or a challenge. And as you begin to feel that, start twisting as you lengthen. Twisting outward towards the yang surfaces of your body when you extend. And as your arms bend, twist inward along the yin surfaces of your body.
Now, since you're working the etheric body all around your body, you can start letting that etheric body expand if you can. But at the same time, let the tissues within your body begin to lengthen. So it's lengthening the legs, the calves, probably will be one of the most challenging places. Thighs easier. Your back depends on whether you have a good or a bad back. But remember, you're also lengthening when you come down from the crown of your head, on your face, down your chest, your pelvis, and your legs down to the ground. Now, even though you're into movement three, still focusing on the lengthening, and your etheric body expanding as your physical body expands, And at some point, it becomes hard to tell whether it's the lengthening of your physical body that causes your etheric body to expand, or it's just expanding your etheric body a little bit that will release your physical body to lengthen. They are co-joined, so it isn't really one or the other. It's truly both. And the next thing is to focus on the rotating of your arms and legs. When your hands come towards you inward, when your hands go away from you, outward. At 12 o'clock, inward. At 3, outward. At 6, inward. At 9, outward. At 12, inward. And on. So get the rotation stable so you can start twisting your arms and legs instead of merely rotating them. As you're focusing on your twisting, is your breathing stable? Are you still stably connected to the boundary of your etheric body below your feet and above your head? Is the bending and stretching of your arms causing your etheric field to extend out slightly when you stretch your arms and when it bends to come in slightly you have this rubber band effect with your etheric field getting slightly smaller and slightly bigger and in the process 
making everything within the etheric field stronger. And as the etheric field gets stronger, do you have any blockages? If you have a blockage, just dissolve it and keep on doing everything else. When you feel that you've dissolved everything downward that you can, you immediately want to start seamlessly dissolving upward. And you're going to dissolve your etheric field going upwards. So as your etheric field comes in slightly, let your arms and your legs lengthen inward. And as your etheric field extends slightly, let your arms and legs and your torso expand slightly. So the two are moving together. And if you're able to spiral your arms and your legs, you can begin doing that. Making sure everything is rotating so that nothing in your body is getting stuck. Now start paying attention to your breathing. Is your breathing becoming smooth and soft? And coordinating with all the other Nagong. And if you're not already doing reverse breathing, Start doing it now if you can. And try as best you can to focus on, beside your breath, what is that thing that's inside your breath? That's chi. So for this, you have to let your intent that's inside your body travel along your nerves. Some people may feel it stronger as they are able to feel the chi that's moving their blood. But the nerves are easier. So it's usually where you start. So now you're focusing on how the chi and the breath are moving together. And try to have your mind settle directly into the chi more than the breath. Focus on your chi. 
Focus on your chi rising up your body and your chi going down your body. It's going to collect at your feet and you bring energy up your legs, up your perineum, to the top of your head, all the way. But don't feel complicated about it. It's very simple. Get your chi to move your hands down and get the upward current of chi to move your hands up. So use your chi to get your hands to the very bottom and then lift your chi through your legs up the insides of your body to the crown of your head. Up your arm. And it's the same thing as you go down your body. You may find that if the sense of chi inside your body gets a little bit weaker, that by putting a little more attention on your breath and building your breath up, that that will enable you to recognize the chi in you a little bit better. Although your breath and your chi are two different things, you can make them go together. You can make your breath go as strong as it can go. And then with your mind, just move your chi. It doesn't necessarily have to be in coordination. But most people find having the two moving together is easier. And then open and close all the joints and cavities of your body. Once you've got the chi moving, it is that your chi that's opening and closing your joints, or the opening and closing of your joints that is moving your chi. But the central issue is between any two joints. You want to have those joints opening and closing, and you want to connect them. You want to connect the current from the center of one joint to the next joint. So they form a circuit of chi movement inside your body that's very clear. So if you've completed, just pause and relax.
So you can sit down. Let's talk for a moment about this. First, just tell me how you did. How was that? I'm quite warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> and? Yeah. I was concentrating, uh, or trying to concentrate throughout on getting the byway point involved more than it usually is with me. Mm -hmm. so, uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't have nearly as much trouble with the Dantian and the bubbling well and feeling the energy in the lower half of my body, but uh, I think there was something going on in the upper regions, so. Good. Okay. We should be happy with that. Yeah. And Joanne? Yeah, I um I felt like I had been yes, that I'm able to pull things together, the my breathing from the beginning, I think. I mean I lost it here and there as to oops. <clears throat> uh, but um uh I, I just I, I still fall apart at seven <laughs> so it was I was just like I, re, I mean I realized one of the things this week in, in practicing was that I just I tense up because I don't have it yet right where I can really relax into the others hmm. um quite fully um I think or you know working on that anyway but in seven um yeah this week I realized I was just stiffening um because i wasn't uh i still just don't feel i'm doing it right it's like yes i need that i need to come out at some point we need to get together in the yard when it stops being so freezing in the morning mm -hmm. um <laughs> but but that 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 is my yeah that that one is is my my biggest challenge i feel the others i could observe i think practicing with the recording will be really helpful because of all of your yes reminders okay mr bynum yeah i'm i have felt uh really good <laughs> it was great I, the that what you know the the mind intent was a little bit different but it's like the five bringing the five points and our twisting and and mm -hmm. extending and out and in, you know, all more and more integrated. And I think for me in the past uh, three weeks or so, as I have, have uh, moved from, you know, just uh, too dramatic reverse breathing to it being more natural, uh, that has really made a huge difference being able to think about these things and 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 the, the image not in this lesson so much but for the lo the lower dot the end having the energy expand mm -hmm. out continuously uh was one thing i was thinking of as you were saying that and that i think helped me have some etheric body awareness that's extended beyond the physical body a little little more than I could do do that with in the sort of meditation mode, but doing it during the movement is a different thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Carol, anything you want to add? To, this is not your first time doing this. No, but there's. practicing with it which i which I've, I've i've done in the past and and this it kind of releases me from not okay i gotta think about um, um what am i gonna do extending extending or um um twisting twisting i can just <laughs> whatever he's saying i'll think about it I'll yep. not think about, <laughs> yeah I'll think about it. yeah and and that makes it makes it kind of richer mm. 
Yeah. Cause, cause, um, it's all this there somewhat, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of nice to, to just, okay, I can count. And that's all my brain has to be doing except just <laughs> trying to be inside. Um, so good. So one of the things I would say, um, it's kind of interesting, um, I only got about three quarters of the way through this, mm -hmm. actually, as you'll discover when you see the so, notes, <laughs> which is pointing out that probably you're all breathing too rapidly still. So mm. continuing to be aware of focusing on slowing the breath is and that's a difficult thing for us. Um, yeah. We, our culture doesn't focus on that, certainly, in, in its earlier stages. Um, and it's it's difficult for us to get it slowed down. But um, um, there are great benefits. <laughs> to getting the breath to slow down, not only in terms of this practice, but in terms of your health. Um, so that's one of the things to to be aware of. And you can work on that, obviously, any time and any place, because nobody's going to know <laughs> unless you push yourself to the point of breathlessness, which you should not. Um, but um, continuing to work on, on slowing the breath um, and uh, do read the, all of the notes because there's some um, elements in the uh, latter part that we haven't, you haven't even thought about yet in doing this practice. So uh, that, that can be helpful to look at that. Um, David, yeah. uh, in terms of slowing the breath, uh, since right now for me it's tied to the motions of each, you know, two through seven, uh, should we aim for uh, doing the inhale and the outhale for two cycles? Uh, or... I'm not, I'm not sure how to accomplish, you know, uh, in the form, uh, you know, sitting by yeah. myself, there's no trouble slowing it. Uh, but in the form, I haven't, I, I can't imagine <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, no, um, I would not say to, to uh, use two breaths for a, a, a cycle of movement. Um, but rather to to work on um, it, you really have to just focus on slowing the breath itself. In other words, learning how do I get my inhale to slow down and transition smoothly to exhaling slowly, <laughs> and it's. You'd be surprised what you can do when you really um, okay. let yourself focus on it and, and practice it. Um, we get so used to just breathing however we breathe. Um, and we're, we're capable of um, breathing much more slowly. Um, I, I'm not expecting you to uh, slow down to a, a you know a five minute breath um, that's not a reasonable <laughs> expectation um, you start that when you're about five I think. <laughs> <laughs> those kids who can go underwater for you know five minutes right yeah um but you can you can actually without much difficulty slow down to a uh, certainly a um, um, 30 or 40 second breath or a one minute breath um, 
and um, so I encourage you to work on that because that's that's really um, um, an important health element in this and it allows you to slow down the movement and to, mm -hmm. to have time more time to do the movements mm -hmm. so it, it's uh, but I'm I'm not suggesting you should do two breaths of movement, uh, Bill. Okay. Okay. No. Um, and it's you know <laughs> the other thing, and I I will say certainly is a consideration. Um, when we're older, it is I think it is more difficult to learn to slow the breath. Um, our lungs are not as flexible as they used to be, um, and so it it takes uh, it takes real practice. Back to my favorite word, um, but it's something that that virtually everybody can do to some degree. Um, so I'm not expecting you to do uh, extremes, but uh, mm. See if you can make some improvement because I think it will help. So yeah, uh, I mean, I, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say yes because it it just you relax into it. Yeah. And therefore, and then you relax into the movement. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Absolutely. So when you uh, do the whole set of gods, everybody always gets very different experiences, uh, different parts of what um, are not working that well in, inside of them make um, themselves shown, and parts of them that are working well inside of themselves make themselves shown also. But because it's changing so much, I don't think what happens to any individual is necessarily indicative of what should happen. The experience is not that important. Developing what's inside of you is important. Every um, decade you do it, <laughs> a lot of new things could happen and things about the only <laughs> and that's about the only promise that can be actually made this is one of the promises uh, practices excuse me in taoism qigong that is considered to be a lifelong practice and i don't think any of us had any doubt about that <laughs> So, any last minute questions on this part? Okay, um, Bill is taking off, uh, Bill Nagel is taking off for two weeks in Ireland. Oh! Poor Bill. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Enjoy. Is it your first time? Yes, my first time. I've uh, been all over the place, but uh, never Ireland. So, you going all over Ireland? Uh, no, just the Republic, uh, and not Northern Ireland. Oh, well, good answer. <laughs> sort of a big circle from Dublin over to the West Coast and down and back again. Sure. So, when you get to Dingle, one of yes. the pubs in downtown Dingle is Curran's, and that's my family's pub. Ah. My grandmother was born there. My cousin Jim James Curran um, still runs it, so oh, it's been in the family oh. for I don't know how many hundreds of years now. But it's one of the really old time ones. Okay. So it's oh, great. you got to stop the top there. Of the hill, Curran's. <laughs> okay. Right. So many people go in and say, "Oh, I know your cousin Joanne." <laughs> <laughs> James is probably sick of it. <laughs> okay, I've got a note to this. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay, enjoy. It'll be wonderful. Yeah. I love Thank Ireland. You. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Carol, great to see you. Great to, great to be here. It's nice yeah. to have the energy of all of you. <laughs>
Carol, I'm, I'm sorry, you have to leave. This is when we go into working on the woo. Okay, yeah, I better get off so that, I mean, maybe I've got, I've got some time, but I'd be better off to just to bow yeah, out that, now. That's fine. We'll, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah, great. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, I don't have to admit, I don't have much working on the woo this week. It, it was one of those weeks where I had three very early morning things. I had a colonoscopy oh. on, on Monday. I had a dentist appointment on Thursday. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> ah. anyway. did, did you uh, see that they're, um, they're, they're developing a pill to do endoscopy and colonoscopy. No, oh, what does that mean? A, a pill that contains a tiny camera and <laughs> power to motivate it in different directions. And... Well, <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, I'm sure they are trying, but you know, the idea of a camera inside my body is a little creepy. <laughs> well, I understand that they've actually achieved it. The first one was uh, apparently uh, too large to swallow, Oh, <laughs> but, but they've got it down now. So it's the size of a vitamin pill, supposedly. Wow. Well, so. you know, there's that, I forgot what it's called, that kind of <laughs> rudely referred to as the poop in the box. Yeah. That kind of, you know, they send you a box and you literally send your... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done yeah. that. Saturday Night Live did a very, very, very funny skit on that one. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> but I do have polyps. I mean, everything is benign. But then, of course, that she sent me kind of the standard response, which is, "Don't eat too much red meat." And it's like I haven't eaten red meat in over fifty years. I know. Sure that's not the problem. <laughs> me either. So <laughs> yeah. All right. But anyway, uh, the I, I needed a. Uh, endoscopy because I have sometimes trouble swallowing. So yeah, they did find some problems there and you know, the, the bit of bacteria, whatever, who knows why, but you yeah. know, they have a million theories, but you know, we'll try to get rid of that. So yeah, but yeah, so it's been that kind of one of those, one of those weeks. And to be honest, I really, um, you know, it, it is a, it's a, when, particularly when there's a time battle, I, find going with gods i'm drawn more to going to, with gods especially if there's a particular challenge <laughs> um <laughs> that i want to work on between the next between now and then and the next week and so i think um the yeah doing the upward dissolving and trying to kind of get into that get used to that although one thing i did did notice um, and I didn't think about it until the beginning of this class is that I think because of the prep for the colonoscopy, mm. you know, I'm still holding, having a bit of water retention um, since I started the blood pressure medication, which I'm not happy about. They changed it because it was too much. I still feel, I, and I um, particularly feel it around my ankles. Um, yeah. and that does, and, and, um, in terms of the, the retention more around my ankles, um, it, where it used to be more my whole legs almost, uh, mm -hmm. anyway, um, but I think the prep, because it wipes you out, it like was really, um, it really wiped me out. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I felt the last few days kind of a, a difference in my ankles and and legs but then i was also thinking well i wonder if there's also any connection with the upward dissolving that that was like uh, uh, you know maybe i don't know but anyway but just kind of being more aware of that part of my body intentionally yeah um hmm. is you know it just like kind of it felt a bit different practicing last week than practicing after the procedure so yeah I don't know. Interesting, uh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. But, well, you know, also just trying to make sure I don't, yeah, fill with fluids again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, um, apparently not this week, but maybe next week we could flow through that second paragraph because 
uh, have Carol too. So. Oh, great. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. So Carol is in this class as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. So then when Adam can't make it, I at least have a buddy. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and, um, she's been doing this longer than Adam. So. <laughs> yeah, longer than Adam and Eve. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, she could, yes. she'd give you somebody to, to at least watch while you're doing this. That's great. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, no, and that's another, yeah. And, and kind of knowing that as a goal um, is, yeah, this week should be a little easier. <laughs> in terms of, <laughs> you know, like one early morning meeting. Is that true? Maybe not even. Some weeks are just more packed than others. Um, yep. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't think I have questions. I, you know, I still have the recording of the, that middle part that's a bit of a challenge, but I have you know, the recording of you <laughs> going through it for me. Uh -huh. um, and then I think that, yeah. That, yeah, that'd be great. That'd okay, be great. Good. Yeah. But we'll aim towards that. We will aim. I will. I made myself a note. Um, <laughs> I do. I just, I'm very goal oriented in those kinds of ways. There's a bit of a wanting to kind of get into. Yeah. Yeah get into it and get into the challenge of it and get past the get past the blockages as we say <laughs> <laughs> indeed in many different ways <laughs> uh well have a good week joanne all right thank you very much yeah thank you for class always good we'll see you next week we'll see you next week hopefully all right david thank you you're welcome bye-bye bye-bye